Hey there, welcome to Professor Pearl, a YouTube channel about knitting and other crafts. I'm Nicole and this is episode 22. So if you're new here, the podcast is called Professor Pearl because I'm a math education professor who knits, loves to knit, and I live in the Pacific Northwest with my husband Kyle and my daughter Matilda, who's four. And if you are a returning viewer, I just want to thank you so much for last episode and like all the comments saying, you know, happy anniversary and all the encouraging words. I just felt like so much love and there is a giveaway from that episode that I will actually announce after finished objects and works in progress. So all the things I'll talk about today will be linked below in the description box. And before we hop into the finished objects and works in progress, I just want to thank Anna Luisa, who is the sponsor of this podcast. So I'm actually wearing some Aunt Louisa hoops that were sent to me. I These arrived right before I left on my vacation from Oregon to Wisconsin, which I'll talk about in the personal section. But basically, I only packed these earrings, these hoops. And I wore them every day, super comfortable. And they're sterling silver. And I just think they look really cute with my outfit and I'll talk more about this in the finished objects, the sweater. But since I knit my very first souffle, my original souffle, I'll pop in a picture here, I wanted a pair of hoop earrings. So when <laughs> Anna Luisa reached out to sponsor, I was like, it was serendipitous because they have these really, they have lots of lots of different cute hoop earrings. And the other pair of like kind of, it's kind of like um, a twist on a traditional hoop that's a little modern. I've put these on a picture on Instagram and they are kind of like these like hexagons. I actually wore it with this shirt on my, um, or the sweater that I made. I wore it on my birthday, these, and on my birthday Eve. I think they're really cute and also look really good with this. And these earrings they come and also a cute little ring um they come in these reusable pouches which i thought was really nice so when i actually traveled was on vacation i only bought one pair of earrings these and i just brought it in this and i also kept like some of my other jewelry like my necklaces and stuff in here so that was really nice and one of the reasons why their packaging is reusable is because they are a climate neutral company, which is, I think, kind of fun. Anyway, this ring came too, and I really like it. I was hoping it would fit in my middle finger, but I'm so hot. <laughs> I'm just so hot right now that even like my fingers are kind of swollen, so it's here. But um, I actually have a discount code for this if you're interested in any of, the, any of their jewelry. And I'm thinking about using my own discount code <laughs> to buy more of these rings to stack and stuff like that. I just think it's really cute, fun. So anyway, thank you for sponsoring, Anna Louisa. Thank you for sponsoring this episode. Um, yeah, that was a really just, it felt like it was my birthday and it felt like, um, it was my birthday this past weekend and I felt like it was like a treat that they sponsored me by sending me some fun jewelry. <laughs> so um, yeah, so the discount code and all that's linked below at the top of the description bar. All right, so I'm gonna hop into finished objects. All right. I have two knitting finished objects today and a lot of knitting. And one of the reasons why I have a lot of knitting is that we road tripped from Oregon to Wisconsin and back. So that's 28 hours each direction. We didn't do it straight through, 
but we did tons of stops and it was really fun, but there was lots of opportunity to knit. So I did lots of knitting. And then last weekend was my birthday. So I did lots of knitting. So I have a lot of knitting, a lot of knitting, and I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so the first thing is this summer souffle. I knit this as part of the more souffle knit along that I hosted on Instagram Ravelry and this channel. And it's, the lighting, it's hard to see. It's this navy. Oh yeah, now you can see it quite nice. There we go. Yeah, and I, although I knit it as part of the knit along, it was also like a personal quest to knit it because I have knit all of Laura from Penrose Knits souffle patterns. I've knit her original souffle, her chunky souffle, which is coming out really soon here. And I've knit the petite souffle and now the summer souffle. And so if she comes out with any more souffle things, like obviously I'm going to have to knit them. <laughs> and I knew I wanted to knit it too because it seemed like a very easy to wear sweater and I've already worn it a ton. So let me give you some details. I knit this out of Queensland yarn united and of course I didn't bring it with me. I have two balls of it left and well two and a half balls of it left. So I think I have like 600 yards of this left. It's a it's the the sweater design is for DK, but I would say the yarn I used was like a sport weight, like a light DK or a sport weight. And it which worked out great because Laura's pattern is written in a way where you can do 22 stitches in four inches or 20 stitches in four inches for the gauge. And so with the sport weight, I really readily got. So yeah, I think this is very wearable. The yarn is cotton lambswool blend. I've mentioned the exact percentages in other podcasts. You'll have to look it up if the yarn, but yeah, so it's just, great and i think it's a super fun pattern because while it's a summer called a summer souffle and while i did use a summer yarn that's a cotton and wool blend lamb's wool blend you could do this out of any dk yarn and merino fully no plant fibers you could make this longer sleeves you could um yeah, so you can make like a, any kind of season souffle. You could make a fall or a winter one, which I think would be really fun to do. So yes, yeah, so the more souffle in along is done and I finished the sweater in time. And this was sort of the main thing I worked on on the road trip. And yeah, so since the, I last recorded, I had finished most of the yoke and I had the placement of where the ruffle would go and I had split for sleeves, but I didn't have the body done, the ruffle or the sleeves done. So I finished all that on my road trip, weaved in the ends, blocked this, and I think this is my third or fourth time wearing this already. So I love it. I am very curious if the viewers of this podcast are avid sweater knitters or sweater curious. Let me know. I think that this sweater would appeal to either group. If you were a first time sweater knitter, I just wanna say, I really, really think that this would be a good first sweater. The directions are clear. There's a flexible gauge, either 22, inch, 22 stitches for four inches or 20. So getting gauge will be easier because there's two options. It's well described like what kind of size you should pick. And it's knit in one piece with no sewing. And what will make it a fun, like a fun sort of like for sweater is that there's this very sweet detail that just adds a little something extra. So it's like a little something extra that's not too much, like an all over cable sweater or, you know, something like that. So I just, I really think this would be a, a great first sweater. Now, if you're not into the ruffle, I actually think you could knit this sweater anyway. And I was actually thinking about this because I've had just a few people in my life say that they don't want to knit sweaters with ruffles, but like this is a really cute shape. 
even without the ruffle. So you could just leave the ruffle off. And the same thing with my other souffle, like it's a very cute shape. So I really think you could just leave the ruffle off if you like weren't into it. Um, all right, so that's my first finished object. And I wore it on my birthday Eve with my new jewelry. I was loving life. And I'm trying to think if I wore it on my actual birthday. I did not wear it on my actual birthday. On my actual birthday, I wore a polar bear t-shirt. I love polar bears. <laughs> okay, my second finished object are these socks. So I have a pair of socks complete. And if you know me, if you're new to this channel, the short story is I just don't, I knit a lot of socks. I just don't knit two, a full pair. I'll knit one and not knit the other sock. So I have two socks and I'm really excited about these because I feel like I unintentionally knit a capsule wardrobe. I have this summer short sleeve sweater these socks that match this and have a work in progress that I think coordinates with all this and it's a thicker, longer sleeve sweater. And it all three things go and it feels like this mini knit capsule wardrobe. So that's one reason. And I've said this at least three times, I'm saying it again, but this is maybe my favorite colorway ever. It's called Surfer Girl. So it makes me think of the ocean and I love the ocean. Um, details on this nine inch circular needle, cuff down, heel flap and gusset and slip stitch heel, like what I usually do. The base is an 80-20, which is my favorite base. I like the yarn so much that I would like to do something with the scraps. Maybe knit Matilda a pair. I don't know. We'll see. So I just I love these. And it matches my sweater, I feel like. It all coordinates. So this is my second pair of socks for the summer sock camp. And for I had towards July I had lost hope towards getting any socks completed for summer sock camp, but I finished a shorty pair out of zebra yarns and now I have this. So I have two pairs of socks for a summer sock camp. I say that, but I haven't entered any pictures on Ravelry. Like it's literally just um, me like participating and I haven't entered any pictures yet. Maybe I will, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I have lots of work in progress and I have lots of progress in my works in progress because I did a lot of knitting since the last episode. Okay. So I am test knitting the Linux pullover for Anna from the Bluebird box. I really thought it would be done by this episode, but I finished the sweater instead. The sweaters got flip flopped. And one of the reasons for that is I was on the road trip and I finished the body in my Linux and I needed the next like clue, like to keep knitting. And I wasn't able to get it. And it was partly because Anna was, had limited Wi-Fi with camping. And I also had limited Wi-Fi. If you've ever traveled in the West, <laughs> um, in, in the United States, in the West, you know that like there's limited cell service. And at the hotels we say that I had Wi-Fi, but I just was in vacation mode. So, on the road trip, I finished knitting the body of this sweater. It's a bottom-up sweater, so the opposite construction of this one. <laughs> um, so I finished knitting the body. So this progress keeper is where I was last episode. So it doesn't look like a lot of knitting, but it actually was for me because I finished knitting the body, which is here, and then I had to attach the sleeves, which it's just so interesting knitting a sweater bottom up because it's heavy now. And usually when you're knitting a low, I feel like the yoke goes so quick, but this yoke is going slower for me. And I think it's cause it's kind of heavy and there's a pattern, but I finally feel like I'm in the groove. I will say that the pattern is excellently written. Like it is written super well. 
like for the yolk decreases, it's not just, I think it's called compound raglan. It's not just like evenly going up like every other row decreasing. And so it's this raglan that's like kind of decreasing. Well, I won't go into all of it, but basically there's different sections and every single size says, is like a numbered list and it says, do this section, do this section, do this section. And if you're looking for something, like if you're not a brand new sweater knitter, like you've knit another sweater and you are just like craving some texture or you're craving something to learn something new, I think this would be a good sweater to make because this texture, this is a bubble stitch and this is the inside. So the actual sweater, this is the outside of the sweater. So you knit the sweater inside out, but as you can see, the inside out is very cute. You could wear it this way too. And I was just convinced that I loved the inside as much as the outside, which is this part, until I saw the raglan decreases. And I love the raglan decreases, like how they look. Um, it's the inside, but what will actually be the out of the sweater. It's hard to show right now because it's just this big thing. I don't know. It's probably not gonna show up here very well right now, but you can kind of see these are my raglan decreases and I just love how it pops there. So nonetheless, I finally think I found my yoke groove. It was a slow start there. And technically speaking, I'm on the downhill slide. <laughs> this is due August 30th, so I have a week to finish this. And I always do this to myself with test knits where I'm like crunch mode, but I can do it. I can do it, I will do it. And you can see why I feel like I have a little knitting capsule wardrobe here. Like my socks go with this and with this. I feel like this coordinates with this sweater in a different way. I'm, this yarn is sport weight, super wash, organic super wash, and it is hand dyed by my friend Kelly from Le Mouton Rouge Knittery in a custom colorway called Make Lemonade. Anyway, this will be great. And I, it's so hot right now. I wanted to be recording this podcast outside of my porch, but I just can't. Okay, it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit, which if you live anywhere like Texas or Arkansas, you're probably like really judging me right now, but <laughs> I just, I'm ready for fall. So I'm just really excited about this work in progress. My other work in progress that I'm really excited about is a pair of socks. I have let these socks languish, which are a kind of design I'm doing, which I'm calling the read more socks. And they are toe up cabled DK socks. So I don't have the heel in this one. When I let, when I last started these, I think it was in April, I got to where this progress keeper is. And I had gotten to this point. I think that's a very, like, it's just a fun cable. It's a four row repeat cable. And I do get stitched read on the bottom of this sock and I'm going to duplicate stitch more on this. So when you have your feet up, we'll say read more, assuming that this is on your right foot and this is on your left foot. But if you are noticing this is magic loop and toe up, I typically knit my socks cuffed down and I'm knitting these toe up. I typically knit my socks on nine inch circulars and I'm knitting this magic loop. When I cast these on in April, I had so much stockinette going on. Like I don't even remember everything I was knitting, but I just remember feeling like I was swimming in stockinette and I just needed something interesting. And since I don't usually knit toe up socks, it was like something different and with the cabling, it added like texture, which I needed at the time. Now I've got lots of texture in my life between the Lennox and this, but I just, at, when I cast these on in April, just, I was craving 
texture. And I actually quite like Magic Loop for something that's patterned on one side and not patterned on the other, because then it's like, this is the row, you, it's like clearly like, this is the row I'm thinking, this is the row I'm not thinking. And so I, I like that. And so anyway, this can't count for summer sock camp or sock bingo because I was already here, but I finished it. But this one can, because I just cast this on, on Monday, I think, last Monday. I had meetings, I'm back to work. I'm no longer on sabbatical and I had all day meetings and this was what I brought with me and I did this at the meeting. Anyway, I do have the desire. I don't know if it'll actually happen but the desire to finish these by August 30th because that is the end of summer. Um, I don't know if it's the end of summer sock camp. I actually don't know when that ends, but I'm very into sock bingo from Yarnia. Here's their bingo board. And I've knit two pairs of socks and that's where the blue and the red squares are. I will reuse some of the squares. Like one of them says shorties, fingering weight yarn. That's shorties, fingering weight yarn, cuff down. So as you can see, I almost have five in a row. And this box here is cables. And that was actually the impetus to pull these out as I saw, oh, I need cables. I have a cable sock and it motivated me. And I think it's good because this is a design that I'm working on writing up. And it, since they're a DK cozy sock, it would be perfect to get this tested early fall. Like it would be great. So I would really like to have these done by August 30th, and then maybe have a testing call go out early September. I don't know if that will happen with me going back to school and things. They had flexible squares here that you could put in, like gift knit, but I'm not knitting socks for other people. <laughs> crochet socks or crochet almonds, I'm not doing that. And my first sock, well, I've already knit socks. So there's just things. Um, <laughs> One called Beat Second Sack Syndrome. Theoretically, I should do that. And this might, I feel like this could count for that because it is any time I'm finishing a pair in Beating Sack Syndrome. <laughs> but I don't think I'll need to use any of those flexible ones because, yeah, because I can also get this one up diagonally because it says sport wear heavier yarn. So this is DK. And then this one here says toe up construction. So I'll actually will get two. So in addition to completing the bingo card from, from Sock Bingo, you also need to knit a total of five socks. And I am just close enough to making that, so it would be stellar to finish. I think the read more is just gonna be so cute. Um, in terms of testing and the way I'm writing the pattern up, I'm writing it up for DK, because this is DK. And you can see there's cables, but I'm also writing a non-cable version to go alongside of it where this top would be um, ribbing. Just in case you're like, I want the reed more on the bottom of my foot, but I don't want cables because cable knitting is not for everybody. But I think an all over cable sock is really fun with DK because DK goes really fast anyway. And this yarn, is a book themed yarn. It's from Ex Libris Fibers. I got it at the Rosie Yarn Crawl in a colorway called Boxing, which is kind of a reference to like the old crumply, like round pages and older texts. And so for me, it just, it had to be these socks. But even though I'm designing it and I'm using this and I love this, I'm thinking for the actual like design and the finished object photos, I should do a different yarn because this DK yarn does not have nylon in it. So I, I like, that's not good. Like when you say what yarn you use, people might like want to go buy that and like, you should use a DK that has nylon in it if you're making socks. For me, these are going to be like slippers and to me, I'm like, okay, they're going to be like slippers. And also I've got this reinforcement down here where I wear out my socks most so it like it's fine that I don't have nylon but it might not be fine for everybody so I think that I'm going to 
after I finish these, knit another one. <laughs> so knit alongside with my testers is when I end up doing it. Yeah, so I'm gonna make it so it's flexible so that you can do that with cables or not. And then of course, the duplicate stitching could be optional as well. And what else was I gonna say about it? Oh, my only thing, if you're a toe up sock knitter, I would really like you to give me advice. <laughs> So one of the reasons why I always knit cuff down and not toe up socks is that I don't like the way the ribbing looks. Like see how it kind of like flares out. I just don't like that. And the very first pair of socks I knit were toe up. And yeah, like if I just do a regular bind off, it's too tight. And I so I do my very favorite stretchy bind off and it looks okay. When I put it on my foot, it looks excellent. It doesn't look like it flares out at all. It's literally like completely, like you can see. On my foot, it's completely perfect. But I just, I don't know, there's, some, there's something about it that when you look at it, like not on your foot that I just don't care for that much that it goes like this. So anyway, if you have, advice around that, please, please let me know. I would love to know that. Um, also on advice, like last time how I did the testing call is I only announced it on YouTube and I did it through Google form. Let me know if you liked that as well for applying for knits or if you think I should also do it on Instagram. Anyway, I'd love advice around that. I have no business casting on another sweater, but I also have all the reasons in the world to do it because you can knit whatever you want, whenever you want. <laughs> and I finished my Radvent cardigan and it was part of the Scrappy Sweater Along, which is a make along for minis or Scrappy's sweater, like any kind of scrap, any kind of mini, if you're using it to make a sweater, you can enter it in the Scrappy sweater along. It's the only make along we on this channel right now. At one point this summer, we had three make alongs. This is the last one that's going. <laughs> and I finished my sweater. And so we had a Zoom night the first Tuesday of August. And we'll have another Zoom night, night the first Tuesday of September. And I was like, okay, um, I can cast on a scrappy sweater and so I did. I gathered all my scrappy mohair and I cast on a mohair, all over mohair sweater. It's the cloud bow. So I have so many mohair scraps and I weighed them and it's enough to finish the sweater. Okay, this is from my Diaphanus raglan. This is from my very first, very, it looks very close, but it's a different color actually. And this is from my very first Love Note sweater. So this was purchased from Naughty Lamb. This was from Firefly in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. And this is an Isayer. I don't even remember the color, but it was Matilda's. It was Matilda's Love Note, and I don't remember where I bought it from. And then this is Marie and Wool, Marie Wool Goods, Wool and Company. Um, and I got this from Nylam. And there's little bubbles, more than this. And so I would never think to buy these together. However, I think they look really good. I think I'm structuring it more like, maybe like this, I think. Oh, there. This is how I'm doing it. I remember now. So this is the order I'm doing <laughs> the stripes. Oh, gosh. Okay. You get the idea. <laughs> there we go. You get the idea. That's the order I'm doing it. Um, I might switch it up. I don't know. It's just the order I'm doing it on the front panels. And you knit this thing in pieces, I think. I didn't read the directions all the way through. So I think this is the top. Let's 
So this is the front, the front piece. It's very sheer. Obviously I'll be wearing something underneath it. I think some people um, I've seen on Instagram have held mohair double for this. So it has like a thicker fabric, but I'm gonna do the sheer fabric. And I'm like, and if I don't like it, oh well, my, oops, you know, it was made out of scraps. Um, I think I will like it if, you know, just maybe over a dress or something underneath it. These two colors look like they're the same, but they're actually different. I'm not really sure how I feel about the striping. I did it proportionally to how much grams I have. So I have more of this and this and this. So that's why I did the stripes bigger. So I don't really know how I feel about that. So I was thinking I'll do the front panel and the back panel the exact same way and maybe spice it up for the peplum and the sleeves to not have that exact same striping. So that's the front little kind of square, or rectangle rather, and I'm doing the second one. And it goes very quickly. So I cast this on at the zoom and knit, and I knit one other time on this on my road trip. And I almost have the two front and back panels. Now this is super tiny because basically you're gonna add on big poofy sleeves and a big peplum. So it's like purposely tiny, um, but very fun to knit an all over mohair garment. And I'm thinking, well, I was like, oh, I'll only work on this at those scrappy zooms, but there's only one left because the knit along ends on September 15th. So I'm thinking about continuing the zooms. Let me know if you're interested in me continuing the zooms. We only have one make along left, which is the scrappy sweater along, and it's not too late to join. There's still like a couple weeks left, a few weeks left, and might be the motivation you need to start because you only need um, to participate, not finish, to be entered for prizes. So we just finished the more suit flay please knit along that ended on August 15th. I announced two winners on Instagram. They haven't reached out yet. So if you watch this podcast, reach out to me and I got a couple small prizes donated from the Mouton Rouge Knittery, which were cute needle stoppers and the finished object thread and Ravelry, the prize pulled from there. This is a very vibrant pink skein from Zebra Yarns with a progress keeper. How cute is this? This could be fun socks, a muscle berg. I don't know, color work in a sweater. I just think it is very vibrant and fun. And yeah, so winner for that has been announced on Ravelry. Um, also, I pulled a winner from the chatter thread. for some of my glittery stitch markers that I have made. Look how cute these are. So that was from the chatter thread for the more souffle. And um, I'm gonna announce the winner for the one year potiversary. So the one year potiversary giveaway was a gratitude journal. I use Erin Condren planners and I've been using them a lot now because I'm in teacher season and so I've been lesson planning in them. So this is a gratitude journal. So every day is like a little tiny block. It's like um, something I smelled, you know, something that smells nice or something I saw today, uh, way I connected with a friend or, so that's, and it's got this kind of purple metallic, which is cute. I love David's tea. So I got this chocolate chip biscuit one. And then I decided to put together like um, a fun combo of stitch markers. So we've got a pink one, a ye like a very fluorescent yellow one, and this is not showing up in light, but blue. And so these are, could be used as progress keepers or stitch markers, whatever you like. And so just, Twitter's my favorite, tea's my favorite. I love <laughs> writing in notebooks, so I thought that would be a fun 
one year potiversary giveaway. Um, so I drew a random comment and it's novel knits. So if you could email me at professor pearl podcast at gmail.com or message me somewhere <laughs> and send me your mailing address. I'll get that prize out to you. And I clicked on novel knits and they also have a podcast. So I subscribed. I haven't got to watch any episodes yet because I'm filming this now, but I, it's next on my list. So anyway, um, congratulations and please reach out to me. Welcome to the Sip Sip Knit segment of the podcast. I really don't have much to say about Sip Sip Knit today, other than I've been doing a lot of it. <laughs> I realized I don't even know the name of the coffee I'm drinking, which is really tragic actually, because this is my favorite coffee ever. It came in our trade, subs or we do, do this trade subscription. It's like a coffee subscription. You put in like a tasty note you like, and you can get a bag from a different roaster sent to you. And this one's like my favorite and I don't remember the name. <laughs> and I'm drinking this unnamed coffee in a mug that is made from a student at the university that I teach at. And yeah, so I don't have much to say about Sip Sip Knit other than I'm enjoying it. And the other thing I wanted to say is I've actually been playing with making graphics for some Sip Sip Knit swag. Like I was thinking I want a shirt that says Sip Sip Knit, like a crew neck sweatshirt. So I've been making graphics and I'll maybe pop those in here. I've made a Sip Sip Knit wine and I've also made a Sip Sip Knit coffee. And I definitely want these in a crew neck sweatshirt. I'm ready for fall and I'm ready to wear a crew neck sweatshirt. So I think that's part of it is I just keep like fantasizing about cool weather, crew neck sweatshirts, pumpkin spice lattes. Um, so anyway, I'm thinking about popping these on a spread shirt, mainly for myself <laughs> so that I can buy them. <laughs> but if you're interested, um, let me know um, and I can share a link for that. But <laughs> um, yeah, let me know what you think about the graphics or if you think I should make a different kind of graphic, if you have any ideas. But I've had a lot of fun with thinking about the sweatshirts that I want. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the Sip Sip Knit update. The Professor's Pearl segment is where I connect my teaching, my professor life, to my knitting life. And classes start Monday. And like, I'm recording this on a Wednesday. By the time this gets up, hopefully it'll be the weekend. So in a couple days, I'm going to be heading back to teach after having a year and a half off. I really enjoyed my sabbatical like really enjoyed it. And so now I'm going to go back into work mode. The first thing I want to update is I've gotten some um, questions where people are like, are you going to continue the podcast now that you are not on sabbatical? Yes, I'm going to continue it. It may look different. Like maybe I won't be doing a podcast every two weeks. Maybe it'll be once a month. Um, I just want to go with whatever feels like manageable for me. So I do know that even after two or three weeks, I feel overwhelmed with things to talk about. Like I feel like I have so much to talk about. So I don't know that going long periods of time without recording would be a good idea for me personally. But also like I have a really heavy teaching load in the fall and I wanna make sure that I'm having some balance. So I enjoy this space. It's a space of self-care. Um, the second thing is I was thinking back about sabbatical and to be honest, I really didn't miss teaching that much. <laughs> and I think the reason why I didn't miss it so much is I 
still was connected with some of my students. Like I was still working on some research projects with them. And I also um, feel like I got a lot of community through knitting. And so I just think I was, my bucket was being filled in other ways and that's okay. But one thing I really, really, really miss on sabbatical was the beginning of school feelings. So it's a very romantic time starting school, like planning your classes, the first week, the first first day, the first week, the first month of classes. It is like romanticized, but like in it, it is. It, it, I mean, I often teach college freshmen and it it's just, I, everything's fresh and I love it. And I missed that feeling last year, like that, like planning for something new and like the school supplies and the like excitement. And there's just something in the air at the university that first month. And um, I really missed that on sabbatical. It felt like there was something absent not having that. And for me, in January, the which is like the new year, which made me feel, people feel that way, like the new year's a fresh start. It just, to me, it's like January. Like, I don't know. <laughs> My new year is like August always. So I guess it was just a change last year. And so I'm really looking forward to that. And I was thinking about my knitting and how I bring this beginning of school kind of feeling and excitement into everything. So it's like a new year, not just for like teaching, but also for knitting. Like I'm thinking like, what are like, what are the fall things I want to do? And it got me thinking about knitting in general, that like your fresh start, this like feeling of excitement and plans and your fresh start, it can start at any time. It doesn't have to start on January 1st. It doesn't have to start on September 1st or August 1st. Like it doesn't have to start at the beginning of the month. Any time that you deem it to be a fresh start for something, it can be. And whether, I mean, you know, I have like 20 whips, like 20 works in progress. I'm still like, it's a fresh start. I still want to do new things. And maybe that's why people cast on so much is this like idea to start something new is really exciting. And yeah, I mean, I think there's like a, like, you know, a balance, right? We don't want to just cast on a hundred things and never ever finish anything, but also you could, if you wanted, like the whole thing about making is you don't actually have to finish. Like you just have to enjoy it. So if you, like fresh starts and you like casting on all the things, do it. Now, if that stresses you out, finish the thing here or there. But <laughs> but if you enjoy the newness, embrace it. And <laughs> so that's my professor's pearls. Cast on all the things. <laughs>switch into acquisitions and after acquisitions personal life there is a lot of acquisitions so if you're not into acquisitions thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> but the reason why there's so many acquisitions I'm looking at them is a twofold thing the first is I went on vacation so when you go on vacation, like you're going to buy things. I like to call it whiskation because we go to Wisconsin. <laughs> so there was a lot of whiskation purchasing. Also, the second thing why there's a lot of acquisitions is it was my birthday. It was my birthday this past weekend. And when you love yarn, people give you yarn and you also buy yarn to make yourself feel good. So basically <laughs> there's, it's a lot, it's a lot. So I'll hop into it. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Uh, okay. I don't even know where to start. I'll start with a gift from 
Lindsay from Always Yarn First. So I don't think Lindsay sent this as a birthday present. I think she sent it just as a present, but it was like great timing because it was my birthday. <laughs> so she sent me a cute card. And this is Lindsay who has a podcast. This is Little Rock, Arkansas. Oops. And she has a podcast. Here's her logo. Always yarn first. Um, I'll link her podcast below. But she doesn't knit with size zero needles for socks. Because she's a tighter knitter than me and I'm loose. So she sent me these. And her car was funny. She's like, I know you don't like magic loop, but I figure you could use them. And she's right. Like, I, it's not, it's not that I don't like magic loop because like, to be honest, I like everything. Like, is it knitting? Yes. Okay. I'll do it. But I prefer nine inch. So like these were done with nine inch, but the socks I'm knitting now are magic loop. So I really appreciate these. So thank you. And she said one of these yarns was for Matilda and one was for me. Um, this one is for Matilda because she really said she bought it for herself and then she realized there was purples in it and it made her think of Matilda and it's glittery and Matilda was really excited about it. The colorway is Zombie in a Tutu. It's on the base Yummy Sparkle from Arkansas Yarn Company. This is my first time having a sparkle hank from Arkansas Yarn Company and I have to say it is so soft and Lindsay says that a lot on her podcast. Maybe not a lot, but I've heard her say it on her podcast where she thinks Arkansas Yarn Company has like the softest sparkle base. And I have to agree. It's, anyway, this is very cute. Let me know if you have ideas for Matilda what I should do with this. Um, I, yeah, let me know if you have ideas. Since I have Magic Loop and you can't do nine inch with tiny humans, one thing that popped in my mind was socks. Um, this, I'm trying to see if the label, I think the label fell off here somewhere. The yarn had a label when she sent it to me, but now it doesn't. Oh, here it is. Space Cadet is the brand. It's 100% superwash merino wool. And it's this Tweety, tonal color. I was thinking it would be terrific for like a pop of color work. Anyway, very cute. Thank you, Lindsay. All right. I also got a subscription box of yarn from Arkansas Yarn Company of their Sock Society. So it's a similar vellum label, but it's a different label because it's got this hexagon that says Sock Society. And the colorway is Coca Cabana. I get it on the Yummy Plush base. You can get it on the Sparkle base, but I get it on Yummy Plush, which is 8515, super soft, 437 yards. Anyway, it came with this and this mini, which is like a coral mini, which I think goes so good with this because I don't know if it's showing up on the camera but there's very very tiny kind of coral speckles. The Arkansas Yarn Company Sock Yarn Society box is my very first time getting a yarn subscription and one of the reasons why I ended up getting it is their extras are just really good. Like a lot of times extras and things can seem hokey or whatever. Their extras are really good. I love them. So the extra for this month, so good. It is a pattern. Oops, I don't wanna make sure I don't show the Ravelry code. It's a pattern, favorite thing socks, made by Maddie from We Share Needles. It's so cute. Like, so I've got the code, I can download it on Ravelry, but it's also a very cute card that has like all the little, like, 
like a condensed version of the pattern, like just like if you're a regular sock knitter, like just like what you'd need, like the numbers, like for instance, like for the gussets, says pick up your gusset stitches and doesn't really say like more than that, but um, the pattern actually does. Anyway, so she designed this for this box and it's this very cute kind of like, sort of like ribbed. Anyway, it's this very cute pattern. And yeah, I'm the slowest sock knitter, so I don't know when I'm gonna cast this on, but it will happen because I have to knit Maddie's pattern in these socks. I just, I'm so excited. And it came with a mini. Oh, it came with a mini. That's the other extra because the other ones just come with a regular skein. So this is the extra, a pattern with a mini to do socks. Like I just, that's, that's incredible. I think personally, um, okay. Still going here strong on the, on the acquisitions. So it was my birthday. So my mom, oh, I forgot. These are part of the Arkansas yarn. So my mom got me a Care Bear box from Kelly from Le Moon Town Rouge Dairy. So Kelly's been putting together these like 80s themed boxes. And so it came with this like Care Bear knitting bag. So cute, right? So cute. Boop. And I'm apparently forgetting all the things to show. This is the Arkansas stitch markers that come with it. Okay, back on track to the Care Bear box. So, little Care Bears, little pink, I guess, accessory pouch. I've seen about me giving this to Matilda because she was kind of envious about all the things. Heart stitch stoppers. Care Bear stitch markers. How cute are these? And, yeah, and then this cute bag. There was candy. Candy's all been, candy's been consumed, so it's gone. And then a Care Bear colorway, a Care Bear colorway called Cares a Lot. Like how cute is that? How cute is that? I just, it's so good. I don't know what I'm doing with any of these things. Um. <laughs> Like any of these beauties. Lots of cute single skeins. It's a lot of sock knitting or muscle bergs or something. But um, yeah, so cute. That's what I could knit with Matilda. I could knit Matilda muscle berg. I haven't knit her one yet. And it would be sparkly. Mm, I might do that. Okay. So that's so cute. So that was for my mom. My mom sent me some other things in a second package. Included these yarn socks. You put them on here. Thanks, the yarn. I've actually never used these, so I'll try these for the first time. All right, I'm gonna try and get this going. Okay, so I went to Sticks in Bozeman, Montana, on my road trip, and I bought these skeins of yarn because I wanted to get yarn that was hand dyed in Montana. And this was like a rustic wool. It is Briar Ranch Targi DK weight Montana wool. This colorway is called Berry. This one's called Catherine. And this one's called Briar. No, this one's called Doom. This one's called Doom. Okay. As you can see, this is a thick DK. So um, I think I wanna knit the Gold Hour Shawl by Andrew Mowry. I know that's for worse of weight, but I'm a loose knitter. This is a thick DK, you'll be okay. Um, I really like this a lot, a lot, a lot. That was the main thing I bought there. 
this is becoming a mess because Matilda picked this out and has been playing with it. It's like a scene over here. Maybe I'll show. You. All right. Matilda on brand insisted on getting glitter yarn. <laughs> would this be something I would normally buy? No. <laughs> Did she absolutely insist on getting it there? Yes. So yeah, here it is. Lano Gatto made in Italy. It is a 213 yards. So together I've got like 400 yards. What I'm thinking with it, oh my gosh, it's like yarn bar falling apart right now. What I'm thinking about doing with it is you can see it's very thin. I'm thinking about that. I could just take any yarn that I have and make it um, hold this double and like hold it with it and it will only slightly change the gauge and then add some glitter to it. Um, this is like nodding up. This is not good. I need to not let her play with this anymore. <laughs> okay. Around the time she picked this out, I had just finished this summer souffle and she said that she wanted a red one. So I was a little surprised when we were in the yarn store, like literally minutes before we went in the yarn store, she said she wanted yarn for red souffle. And then she picked out that. So <laughs> anyway, I'm really excited about these. I have no idea what I'll use those things for Matilda. She also said that she wanted um, mittens out of them. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can make mittens out of that sparkle yarn, but I could hold it and make you Oh, she didn't say mittens, she said gloves. I don't really want to make gloves, but okay. There's still more, friends. There's still more. We're getting close. For your birthday, do you like to buy yourself stuff? I'm one of those people that does. And I also am looking forward to fall because of school and fall. And I just so my friend Anna from Zebra Yarns dyed some Halloween colors, like I'll link her shop below. Just click on it. <sighs> Fluorescent self-striping. That's Halloween. I could hardly decide what I wanted. Like, I was like, I want the lime green and black striped. I want the... Then I realized I kind of had like a lime green Halloween pear lash in it. So I was like, okay, I'll go with or orange and black. And so I want to cast these on on September 1st which is sort of the other reason why I want to finish these by end of August so that I can just have a pair of like fall Halloween socks. So if I knit these in September, I'll have them for October, which would be very cool. Um, so yeah, so I go to check my mail and the package was big because Anna sent me a birthday present. Mm. She sent me this card, very cute, with knitting on it. It's like a little knit hat, if you can see that. Um, there's these stitch markers that are so cute. They're pearls, pink, and they're perfect for sock knitting because they're really tiny. So cute. And then the beginning around one's like a little bow. Like just way, 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 way too cute. So, way too cute. Okay, and she had it wrapped up too. <laughs> and it is the hot pink yarn that she donated. Like she donated this for a giveaway, but then I have my own now with a coordinating mohair. And so if you follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen this because I like had to show it right away. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about what I could do with this. So part of me is like, okay, like this is epic. Make it a hat, like make it a DK muscle bird, like hold these two muscle bird. But then I'm like, would I get too hot? Because it's like a DK muscle bird is going to be thick and then you're folding it over and then it's mohair. Is that too hot? So 
somebody on Instagram suggested a ranunculus and I've knit a ranunculus. I will say that I knit mine longer than cropped and so I use more than one skein. Although I have heard that people have used one skein, one skein, so I could just knit like a cropped version. Um, yeah, so if you see this and you're like, you know what would be good? Tell me. <laughs> I mean, I need something epic. Like, you know, I designed a pair of DK socks that's like finger with mohair. And I don't want to do that with this because I want it somewhere not on the bottom, but like where it will be seen. That's all I know about it. <laughs> All right, that's a lot, that's a lot. I have no idea if you made it this far because that's a lot. <laughs>
I would say it's about this boy, Santiago, that like, was kind of on this journey through the desert. And I think it's a metaphor for the author's own sort of spiritual journey. And it's one of those books that has like 20 lessons in it, like just 20 powerful lessons. One of the lessons I took away where I'm at in my life is like one of the lessons was like just to be present. Like you can't move forward when you're looking back. And if you're too focused on the future, you're sometimes missing the present. Um, you know, children are really good at teaching us like how to be present in the moment. And um, that was, there's like, a, like I said, like seriously, so many lessons you could get out of this book, but that is one that I took away. And yeah, so glad I read that. I read the book, Eleanor Ophelia is Completely Fine. I think if you like A Man Called Uva, you'd also like this. It's in the same sort of genre. Um, I did not like it as much as, as A Man Called Uva. And I think it's because I had read it right after A Man Called Uva. And I just like probably needed a break from those like hard but beautiful things. Um, I'm also hesitant to talk too much about the plot on this one because there is a big surprise in it and a couple of surprises were actually for me. Um, and so I don't wanna give any of that away if you choose to read it, but I, yeah. So the last book I read is Everything I Never Told You. And I read another book by this author, which I think is Little Fires Everywhere. Everything I Never Told You, so good. Um, so good because I didn't see it ending the way it did. Like I didn't see it coming. And so it kind of had like a surprise ending for me. And it also, basically every single character in there has a secret. Like, I mean, I guess we all do, but, um, just they had big heavy things that they were keeping from like their family and their loved ones and every single character and so that was i think it would be a really good book club book i really do um so yeah so those were the five books i read i did a lot of reading right here and i think it was like what happened is i was in vacation and birthday mode and then school starting and it's kind of like, it's your last raw. <laughs> like, I mean, I read, I do read during the fall and during the school year. I just don't read as much as I can. Like, I just don't have as much free time, right? So, okay. I took some vlog footage for from my road trip. I haven't put the vlog together because I don't know if people want to watch it or not. <laughs> So let me know if you would be interested in it, but I have, I have, I vlogged it. I, it. No matter what, it's fun to have for my family video footage of our road trip from Oregon to Wisconsin. So I don't want to talk about it too much in case people are interested in that. Um, but I will say Matilda was the best road trip partner. I was super nervous, you know, with a four-year-old driving across the United States, but it was great. Uh, we had so much fun read books, watch movies, knit, played games, and stopped and saw some really cool things. It ended up raining, so we didn't do as much hiking as I would have liked, but we still did some. I would say the highlight for Matilda was the dinosaur museums, plural. We only intended to go to one, the Museum of the Rockies, and it was really cool, but then it ended up raining, so we ended up going to more. So we went to three dinosaur museums and she loved it. And so that was really cool. And then we spent time in Wisconsin. We went to Stone Lake, Wisconsin, and we just stayed the same lake house we did um, last year. And we just, I had my paddle board with me. Kyle brought his paddle board as well. Well, that was like one of the perks of driving. There's not a lot of perks about driving across the United States. I'm kidding. <laughs> But one of the perks was that we could bring our sand pile boards. I mean, technically it could fly with them, but I always feel like a circus and we like have like our car seat and our, like all of our things. So it just, 
it was nice to drive and have them. And so we used them every single day, which was really cool. And just to have them out and, and like all day long. And so that was really fun. Um, so last week I started back at work, like at the university, we have like kind of required like all employee meetings, like for everybody, like people who are not professors as well. And then like what's called faculty conference where like all the faculty get together and some sort of like learning or discussion item happens all day. Um, so that that's done. I, before I go to those events, I just plan all my classes personally, because if I'm in those events, worrying about something I need to get done, it stresses me out. So although I have a heavy teaching load in the fall, um, all of my classes are planned. The syllabi are done, emails to the students have been sent, the Canvas sites are set up. So at this point, I'm just like counting down the days to see the students. And um, I feel really organized and I think that's a good way to start off the semester. And yeah, so I'm back in teacher life mode. I had really wanted to wear this the first day of school, but it's so hot. I just don't, even with cotton, I don't think I need to be wearing a sweater <laughs> the first day of school. So um, this may not get to be my first day outfit. Anyway, so yeah, a couple of things to just kind of wrap up like while well, my teacher mode's on. Um, the first is don't forget that there is a discount code for jewelry. If you're in the market for some good hoops, um, I 10 out of 10 recommend these. Um, I have some, I just side note, I have like really sensitive ears. And so since this is like 100% sterling silver and the jewelry is like 14 karat gold plated, like it has not been bothering me at all, which is great. Um, so the discount code is below. We also still have the scrappy sweater along going on. Um, that is gonna wrap up on September 15th. No finished objects are required for that make along. It's just simply to participate. There will be at least one more like Zoom. And that is the first Tuesday of September. I think it's the day after Labor Day in the US. So all that information will be linked below. If you're interested in continuing doing um, sweater Zooms, let me know. I, I don't think I can do it on Tuesday nights anymore, but I would love to continue doing them. Um, also, as we look future, like to the fall, if you're interested in, like now that we're wrapping up this make-along, should we take a break from make-alongs or do you have a make-along idea? You know, like, let me know. And um, yeah, so thanks so much for watching and supporting this podcast. It just like, means the world to me to have a knitting community, um, especially as I'm entering back into work right now. Like I'm just feeling really grateful that I have like a community of people that enjoy something that I enjoy that actually has like nothing to do with my job. Like it's, a, it just feels like a, a space of self care. And so thank you for that and, and being my knitting friend. Bye.